All right, my little clicker is getting tired. But anyway, um, we are in line 37. It says, mark the blameless man and observe the upright for the future of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. All right, so uh, let's go back to 37. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright. So mark them. Observe them. For the future of that man is peace. And you notice that, you know, um, what Jesus said about the peacemakers. Going back to 5-5. Uh, five, five. Matthew 5-5. Five, five, what Jesus said. Oh, it's got it. Five, five. Not five, five, but five, nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So doesn't that sound like a son of God should be what? A son of God should be blameless and upright. And when they're blameless and upright, you see the future of that man is peace. All right. 38. And that peace is what? Rest, right? Mm. 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. So, so all the transgressors, transgressors, um, uh, those who violate God's laws are going to be destroyed together and look at their future. See, the righteous future is peace. The wicked's future is going to be cut off. Let's look at, uh, Psalm one, four through six. And we read, um, six earlier. One, four through six that says the ungodly are not so because remember this was um dealing with the two ways of life contrasted uh so this is uh the negative part the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away therefore the ungodly should not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous and then the six is for the lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the god the ungodly shall perish and he does nobody knows that but god i mean we can fool everybody else but we can't fool god god knows who we are he know if we're real or if we're memorex all right um let's look at 37 20 so it is going right back to what we've been talking about all all through this psalm 37 20 said but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord like the splendor of the meadows shall vanish into the smoke. They shall vanish away. And then like also like we just read in 28 for the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are, are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. Why is he keep reminding us of about the wicked? Because we always concerned about what other people are doing and not our own affairs. We worry about what other people are getting away with and then what we don't have. We can't do that. We need to stay tunnel vision and focus on the Lord. That's what we need to do because God going to take care of, uh, of the wicked. 39. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. 40. And the Lord shall help them, help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. All right. So um, we have a couple of reference scriptures. And let me see if I could kind of squeeze it in. We may go over, but this is going to be the last one. So let's try to get it in. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. So that uh, refers us back to 9-9, Psalm 9-9. That says, 
The Lord also would be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And then 3719 that we read already, they should not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. All right. And then 40 says, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. And so that's Isaiah 31, 5 for a reference scripture. Isaiah 31, 5. I'm going the wrong way. Isaiah 31, 5. That says, like birds flying about, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will also deliver it. Passing over, he will preserve it. All right? So, God is going to take care of us. He's going to preserve us. We don't have to worry about anything. All right? And then let's go look at... Um, I think the B part of 40... Yes, he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. So in 40, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. And by preserving us, that's a deliverance as well. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. And it gives us our final reference scripture in 1 Chronicles 5.20. That says... And they were helped against them, and the Hagrites were delivered into their hand, and all who were with them, for they cried out to God in the battle. He heeded their prayer because they put their trust in him. And when we put our trust in God, he has nothing but to hear our prayer. All right? And being that, and, and saying that, uh, <laughs> They were in, they cried out to God in a battle. Listen, we are in the army of the Lord and we're going to go through battles. And if you don't want to go through any battles, then you are, you in the wrong army. All right. Because as Christian soldiers, we're constantly in the battle, but check this out. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. All right? And so the word of God that we can use as our weapon, our protection is the armor of God. So, and we have God in heaven who is looking down, who's going to preserve us. He gave us our word to help keep us focused. Man, we're straight. We're set. We don't have anything to worry about. We don't have anything to fear. And we can rest in the Lord. That's what this psalm is all about. It was a long one. But we can rest in the Lord now after this. All right. So that is Psalm 37. Lord, so willing, we'll be in Psalm 38 next time. I'm sorry. This one has gone really over. But it's all good. And uh, it's all for God's glory. So anyway. I love you. Keep the faith. Keep the focus. And God bless you.